Yeah, it's Destination Yuri. It's the morning program. I'm Rowan Hand. This is Dr. Licia Troughton, the artist of Canada, the author of the linen memorial, the linen cloths that hang in, 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 in a beautiful wall, 400 cloths with the names of those who perished in our community uh, throughout our troubles. There they are. They're all there. Ten names per cloth, and they hang in beautiful profusion uh, in that linen memorial wall. And you're straight from the... Uh, the long gallery at Stormont, where well, you were... The hallowed halls of power, I suppose. Indeed, Something that's it. Up. And how did it go? Tell me how Stormont went with the Linen Memorial. Well, Rowan, I understand that some of your uh, ex-BBC colleagues actually go to these places and uh, participate in the politics of the day, and that uh, you know some of them. Well, Mike Nesbitt, the Ulster Unionist leader, I hope you give him my regards. He was singing them. your praises. Well, why wouldn't he? I understand you were his boss. We were good friends. We were good friends. Mike and I worked closely together on a program called Good Morning Ulster, Over the Worst of the Troubles. And uh, our commonality was reporting and being the editor in charge of uh, the, the litany of the night before his deaths and the awfulness that occurred. And but that's really how I met you, through uh, being that person. So yeah. uh, I suppose now I've met... Mike Nesbitt in the same role. Mm -hmm. He talked about his family's linen business, which apparently was raised to the ground, but out of it grew BBC Absolutely. on the same site. Did you know yeah. that? I didn't know it was the same site, but that's, that's interesting. That's, uh, but Mike is a good the fellow. Apology from Mike. Yeah, he was a good lad and is a good lad. I, little did I think he would ever have gone on into politics because he was the guy who grilled the politicians when they came into his studio. And interesting sat at the what desk. happens in life, isn't it? It is indeed, yeah. Now you're, and I had a visit from the Secretary of State, Teresa Villiers. Oh, Teresa, Teresa Villiers. She's a fine lady. She was very interested in Anne Hale's article and therefore uh, the linens. And uh, we did a tour through uh, the memorial uh, without, uh, well, in quiet, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Uh, without uh, disturbance. So these uh, handkerchiefs that are now packed up to go to Belfast BT 14 were obviously hanging on the walls, and she was interested in the stitching. And I showed her a family uh, linen piece that had been mended. Mm -hmm. And we talked about that metaphor in terms of her one of her portfolio items, which, of course, is not an item. It's a huge area dealing with the past, which she said is, is a challenge, but mm -hmm. uh, is ongoing. and. I suppose that's why I still feel this project is ongoing. Yeah, she's a, a woman like she's a young woman like yourself. What did you make of her? Did you hit it off with Teresa? <laughs> um, I, I don't know the answer to that kind of question. I mean, she's a lawyer. I'm an artist. Uh, we connected in terms of, I suppose, the domesticity of life is still seen as a woman's purvey. And although we're both public, I'm a public artist, a socially engaged community uh, practice artist, and she is a, a lawyer engaged in public life. Uh, there is uh, a commonality of being from uh, our socialization, which uh, would have included very much needlework in the past and ironing and oh, uh, yes. the chores of daily life, which has to go on despite, as mm -hmm. you t and Mike talked uh, about it, the litany of deaths over such a chaotic period. Mm -hmm. And uh, men like you would have been in the public life absolutely daily, you know. And mm -hmm. in, in many ways, Stormont is, is still full of those patriarchs. Mm -hmm. yeah. Patriarchs, I suppose, yeah. But what you did as the matriarch, you brought both communities together in this. You had the the tradition of the orange and the tradition of the green, each having been wounded and destroyed equally in the awfulness of our terribleness. And there you were, they were together, you're back from meeting with the Dominicans in Yuri just as easily there as you are with the Presbyterians of Warren Point. And you were a force for healing in the community. Thank you. And Bestbrook brought their primary school, four children wow. from their primary school, and uh, four eager young women uh, who are going on to great things in their college life from uh, the uh, high school there. So that was that was wonderful to see Splendid. that participation. And what was a moment of great kind of grief and release was after the wonderful speeches, including Anne Morgan, Alan McBride, Robert McBride of the Samaritans, Alan obviously of Wave Trauma Center, 
uh, Anne Morgan, and then Helen Madden, formerly of Romper Room and now a funerary celebrant, a, a humanist one, and uh, obviously Father Cesare, uh, who has helped engage the volunteers so well with Father Ralph up at the Dominican Priory. And we had a large workshop there on Saturday in order to get this ready for <clears> Storm <throat> One. It was all go, go, go. I'm only coming down from that now. But uh, after the speakers, the children, I mm -hmm. engaged them in an act of drawing up the blinds because we're going into, uh, well, yesterday and the, the day before, mm -hmm. the longest day of the year, we're going into the light. And so, uh, as Paul J. Miles from Detroit, the African-American singer, award-winning, and he also lives in Switzerland, excuse me, so not just Detroit, uh, very much interested in peace as he sang an original song, I walked down the long gallery and the children raised the blinds. And that wow. is on, uh, uh, on a, we'll get that on YouTube at some point. Sounds, sounds good. Well, Canada calls you back now. You're it heading does, away it tomorrow. It does, but uh, I must leave you a gift, Rowan. A gift? From the matriarch to the patriarch, I understand you also do a little cooking. In fact, I've seen it myself. I do cook. I love cooking. Well, uh, we, when we iron and sew, we also cook. Now, this is from the wonderful Victorian Albert Museum in, uh, wow. in London. It has been used, so I would yeah. like you to drape this over yourself as if you were about to cook. Well, or this is more of a sacramental thing. in the, thing. In the kitchen. You know what it's like. You know, and uh, since you aren't allowed slogans in Sturmont, you have to be very careful. You have to be very about, careful. I, I just had a this tiny is beautiful. little Thank or, you. origami a brooch that was made on the previous Sunday from another group of Healing Through Remembering, and those representatives who were there with the Samaritans and representatives from Corey, Mila, Alistair, and Heather uh, Kilgore. And I appreciate them coming, and I want to thank everyone who supported me this last year at your orchestration, I'm going to well, we, say. We were there doing our best for you. And uh, then, um, of course, the volunteers who did the sewing all these last five years. And since there's mm. no slogans at, at Stormont, would you, you pull the bib up? Please. I must pull it up, okay. Andrew, get me out of this. These are envelopes <laughs> because always when These I, are envelopes. So uh, envelopes mean goodbye. Goodbye. Make. Make. Do. Do. And. and Mend. This is for my, my, my apron and all that. Well, um, it's a little bit of a metaphor about yeah. what we have to do. Uh, Anne Morgan talked about the resilience of linen. You can boil it. Well, and the thank, resilience thank of the Northern thank Ireland. You. Thank you. And thank uh, you for this. character after Father Cesare talked about suffering and human He talked. Suffering. Cesare talked. Yes, he did. Wow. That's very, very good. Very good. Your mom and dad were there, I gather. They came. What did they yeah, make of it all? Yeah, Back yeah. in Northern Ireland, they left many years ago? For Canada? 1970. My goodness, yes. Well, <laughs> it's, it uh, has, it's all these processes give people peace at different parts of their life. I'm not saying one process <clears throat> uh, works for everybody. Uh, but I heard uh, an embroiderer who had done the name of one of the people that she had loved mm. and her husband, as she walked out, she said, My, I've, I've been changed. And uh, in a way, because my parents came back and I was always curious about Stormont, mm -hmm. a part of me is at peace that the, the officialness of this uh, poverty-stricken sort of box um, has been recognized as well as uh, engaged in local communities. Does well, you've done sense? it. It makes total sense. You've come from afar and you've helped us mend and we are continue to make do in the area of the pathway to peace. Whatever potholes we encourage, we, we encounter, we shall make do and go across them because the prize is there waiting, the prize of peace. We haven't reached peace yet, but we're on the road to peace and you're there helping us. Thank you. Lysia Troughton, Dr. Lysia Troughton, the Bangorian, the Canadian, the, uh, the lady who's come back from Canada to find her roots and her artistic heritage here in Northern Ireland among linen, and linen cloths. Now goes to BT14 for the year, perhaps Oma, perhaps Effie McWilliam Gallery, Dr. Rianne Coulter was there, and the 16th Fiber Triennale in China. My goodness, China. <laughs> You're heading to China with it. Wow. I've had an invitation by Surat Maharaj and the curator. We wish you well. Go well. Take care.